It is fascinating to see how creatures like ants and bees work and manage a hive of tens of thousands of individuals in a very coordinated and structured manner. They almost seem to have like a connected and shared mind which is accessed and used by all the individuals to allow an unproblematic and well-designed social society. So today I'd like to dive a little bit deeper into the complex world of a beehive mind and also want to show you how it compares to the behaviors of a school of fish in the second half of the video. When making decisions, the human brain is a cluster of firing neurons. Groups of neurons represent different choices and can interact with neighboring neurons by either exciting them to fire too or by suppressing them into silence. So out of this rapidly happening crosstalk between countless neurons, a decision will emerge. Similar things happen within a beehive, while all the single bees represent one neuron and behave like one. So when it comes to making a decision in the hive, for example where to build a nest, the individual bees take a side sort of speak and support or veto each other until the whole hive reaches a consensus which all bees will then follow. A huge part of that process is the so-called waggle dance. This dance describes a particular figure 8 dance of the honeybee and is performed by foraging or scouting bees to share information about the direction and distance to potential water sources, flower patches or new nest locations. During the dance, each circuit consists out of two phases, the waggle phase and the return phase. They start with a so-called waggle run, which is followed by a right circle back to the starting spot, then another waggle run and a left circle back to the starting spot. That procedure can be repeated up to over 100 times by a single bee. The angle or the direction in which the bee moves in relation to the hive shows the direction of the location and the duration of the waggle circuit reveals the distance to that location. On top of that it is believed that the number of circuits even show the quality of the discovered spot. Now to come back to our brain and neuron analogy, the waggle dance can be seen as the equivalent of a firing neuron trying to excite the surrounding neurons, but there's also a form of bee communication which can be seen as the opposing signal, the repressing of neighboring neurons, and the bees will do that by headbutting each other. Yes, you heard that right, bees actually give each other headbutts to communicate and tell each other to cease and desist. That phenomenon was discovered by Thomas Seeley from Cornell University around the year 2010. The bees vibrate at a frequency of around 350 Hz for a very short period of time and bump into other bees to sort of silence them. For example, this behavior is used by bees who have sensed danger in a certain location and now want to silence other bees which promote the same spot. The headbutting is also used by deciding on a new hive spot. Bees which promote one spot try to sanction the bees which promote another spot. However, after all, bees always come to a shared consensus and then act collectively because the ultimate goal of a beehive is the survival of the whole community and that is only possible with teamwork. I also want to shortly talk about the role of pheromones within the beehive because they also play a very important role in the communication and the survival of the whole hive, especially when it comes to the queen of the hive. The queen constantly emits pheromones which can be sensed by all other bees. However, if a queen suddenly dies, the pheromone emission stops and the other bees will soon recognize that they need a new queen because she is absolutely instrumental when it comes to the hive survival, being the only one that produces constantly new eggs. The missing queen pheromones lead the others to selecting a new queen, which is happening by feeding royal jelly to one of their larvae. And lastly I would like to compare a beehive to a school of fish which seems to work in a similar collective understanding too. It can be quite fascinating to watch hundreds and thousands of individuals performing all kinds of different movements without missing one beat. Fish schools have a common direction, they turn, expand and contract all together, yet they do not work in a hive mind. Every fish is individual and must execute perfectly, so there's no leader, instead they come together in a self-organizing way. A school of fish coordinates itself by having one fish coordinate the nearby fishes in an extremely fast and precise way. So for example, one fish turns right, then its neighbors turn right and then their neighbors turn right and so on. That happens so fast that it looks like one big overarching moment. This is possible because each fish maintains a so-called zone of repulsion with its neighbors where fishes evade each other to avoid collisions. Then outside of that area there is a zone of orientation where each fish tries to match its neighbors. 
The fishes do all that with a combination of visual perception and an organ alongside their body called the lateral line, which can sense extremely subtle pressure changes in the water surrounding the fish. So if a neighboring fish speeds up or turns in the water, it can be felt through that organ. The details on schools of fishes, like the knowledge about how large maneuvers begin and how really complicated movements are coordinated, aren't exactly clear as of right now, but it is still fascinating to see it happen. Now after all, and although on first sight both the fish schools and the beehives seem to work in a similar fashion, they are actually quite different. But I think all in all it is fair to say that both systems are mesmerizing to watch and very interesting to learn about. I really hope you enjoyed the little tour through the complex world of a beehive and its comparison to the schools of fishes. Before we end it here, I would like to ask you, do you know any other hive mind like species? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you liked the video, feel free to leave a like and maybe even subscribe to the channel for more content like this. But most importantly, take care of yourselves and have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day.